Now this is the Legion Precision Compensator with the Legion Precision Barrel. Let's get some slow motion footage of it on the Glock 19 right now and see how it fares. So I had this idea the other day. I got this new compensator right here for my Glock 19. And the idea is, can I use it on all my different handguns? So welcome back, you sexy PewTubers. I'm trying to get this video done before I go out of town. Going out of town to do a paid video gig. I will have a vlog about that coming up very soon. So you guys need to stay tuned for that one. I may or may not be out of town when this video publishes. So I'm not really sure what day everything's gonna happen because everything has a delay here on YouTube. Long story longer, I really like compensators on handguns. It's just something that I like. Now, I always have two rules that every compensator must pass in order for me to say, I think I would carry with it. But I have a new rule that I'm gonna try to implement and I'm gonna see if this compensator right here will work on this gun, this gun, this gun, this gun. Just got a Glock 43, wait for that build. This gun, this gun, and this gun. Let's get into it. So over the past couple of years, I've tested a few different compensators. We've tested Texas Black Rifle, we've tested Arc Division, tested Mayhem Syndicate. Now Mayhem Syndicate was definitely my favorite because of the size, but they're so hard to get your hands on that it's hard for me to say, I 100% recommend it if they're not always available. So my favorite has always been the Texas Black Rifle Company because I could always get it to cycle using the OEM guide rod springs and I could always get it to cycle using range ammunition. Those two things are super important to me because compensators really shine with plus P ammo and carry ammo. And I know 100% if it will cycle with the range ammo, it will most definitely cycle with the hot ammo that we use for concealed carry or duty carry. And I also want it to cycle with the OEM guide rod springs just because in the past, whenever I've played with aftermarket springs, it usually causes some weird battery issues that I wouldn't carry with. Now it's fine for the range to change your springs, but not for carry in my personal opinion. The downside is, Texas Black Rifle hasn't made any comps in about a year now, and nobody has them in stock. So, Carl created a compensator. We're gonna look at it up close here in a second, but I kind of wanted to test it out on all these different guns. Now also what I did was I tested it with different grain ammos, Federal 115 grain, Remington 124 grain, and Winchester 147 grain. I tested all three of those weights in all of these different guns. Let's go through them one by one and talk about what my results was at the range. First gun that I tested it with was this sleeper build that I have from Legion Precision. This is the uh, minimalist slide and the RTF2 frame. If you wanna see this video on this build, I will put a playlist down in the description. For the record, I'm not trying to make y'all comfortable. That's right. For the record, you ain't trying to grow any stuff for you. That's right. For the record, lab on me going all the way. For the record, ain't trying to let no time to waste. But at the range, it ran everything that I fed it. I fed it 115 grain, fed it 147 grain, and I fed it 124 grain. It cycled every single round and locked open on the last round every single time. Now, because that compensator is so thin and, and skinny, I was like, you know what? I wonder if we can try it on the Glock 43. So with this one, um, right now, this one has a plus two mag extension, so it only holds eight rounds. So what I did with this one was I ran two rounds of 115, two rounds of 124, and two rounds of 147 grain to see what would happen. Then after that test, I put a full mag of each to see how they would cycle and they cycled great, no issues there. So it definitely works for the Glock 43. But then I got to thinking, all right, cool. What if it will work on my Polymer 80, AKA Glock 26? Now this one's a build that we did. I have a video, it's either already posted or will be posting here in the next day or two on this Norso CNC slide. So if you're asking, that's what it is. But I do have a build for this gun. I'll put a playlist below for it. So I put it on here. On this gun, I have the Blacklist Industries 
threaded barrel on it. Put a mag in it. I did the same thing that I did with the other ones, except with this one, I ran three rounds of each ammo to see how that would cycle. Uh -huh. So that one cycled without a hitch. Actually, that one ran really, really well. And I was really surprised about that. I was like, dang, that works pretty good. The only downside is, um, and I love Blacklist Industries barrels, their barrels are a little bit long um, as far as the shoulder of the barrel is concerned. So it's really difficult to get your comp very flush with the slide, but honestly, that doesn't bother me. My thing is how does it function? It definitely wins for the Glock 26. Oh, and don't worry guys, I will be having a coupon code for this compensator. I'll talk about that here in a little bit. So then I kind of thought to myself, all right, it runs on the Gen 3 Glock 19, it runs on the Glock 26, and it runs on the Glock 43. How will it compare on the Gen 5 Glock 19? And the reason I bring that up is the Gen 4s and Gen 5s have a different recoil spring than the Gen 3s. So I put a mag through that. Now halfway through that mag, I was accidentally holding up the slide lock slide release. So I reloaded the mag with a few rounds, tested it, everything worked fine. And then I tried it on this one. This one is the Polymer 80 Long with the Glock 17 slide and I got a true precision threaded barrel in this one. Now this one, I didn't know if it would work or not. Sometimes when you get a ton of aftermarket parts, sometimes you can get tolerance stacking. Now, right out of the box, it didn't want to cycle one of the 115 grain bullets, didn't want to cycle one of the 124 grain bullets. And then uh, the 147 grain went through it just fine, but then the slide didn't lock open. So with all that being said, I'm actually gonna get my hands on an OEM Glock 17 slide and put it on one of my OEM Glock 17 frames. In the next video that we do on this compensator, we will include this in the follow-up. Speaking of follow-ups, I was gonna test it on my CZP07, but when I was out at the range, I couldn't get it to thread on. And I was like, well, maybe the thread pitch is different. Once I got home, I realized that I was just holding it crooked. So this will be in a follow-up video as well. So I'm unconfirmed on the CZ P07, and we are unconfirmed on like a Glock 17, just because this was all I had at the moment. But then I got to thinking, all right, what about my other guns that have threaded barrels? So we took out the MMP 2.0. Don't try and make y'all comfortable. Yeah. For the record, you ain't trying to grow any stuff for you. Yeah. For the record, lab on me going all the way. For the record, ain't trying to link no time to you. This gun probably runs better than every single one of my guns. This gun just runs like a raped ape. And I did not say raped date. Somebody saw it, I said that in a previous video. I meant like the ape, you know, ooh, 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 raped ape. That's how this thing runs. It runs really, really well. Fed everything I threw at it, all the different weights. Locked open on the last round, no issues with the MMP 2.0. Now, I didn't try this with my MMP 2.0 compact because right now, I have a lightened spring in it because I was testing a different comp and I can't find my OEM guide rod spring. So I'm gonna have to order another one. But I am assuming because the MMP 2.0 compact, I believe has the same exact spring as this one. And so if it runs on this one, it's most definitely gonna run on the MMP 2.0 compact. Next up on the list, I took out the old FN 509 tactical. <laughs> Now this one I felt like kind of had a little bit of a hiccup. None of the rounds misfired and no, there was no malfunctions. 
it was just me personally. I was just having one of those weird range days and this was one of the first guns that I shot and I was just like stuttering a little bit and wasn't being very accurate. Now the interesting thing I thought about this gun was when I put the rounds through it, I completely forgot that the FN509 Tactical comes with the reduced powered uh, spring from the factory. I was actually using the higher spring rate with this and it cycled every single round and locked open on the last round. So there's a lot to be said about that. Next up, I put it on my CZ. Um, this one has the primary machine slide work and we got the primary machine match grade barrel and we got the HBI trigger, all kinds of stuff. I'll put a link below if you wanna see that video. So I took this one out there put some rounds through it. And then this thing ran like a champ. So, all right, now that we got all that out of the way, let's dive up close. Let's talk about this compensator, some of its nuances, and then what I think about it as of right now. All right, guys, so here we are up close with all the guns that I tested, but I wanted to give you kind of an up close and personal look at what this Legion Precision compensator looks like. Um, so there it is on the sides. We got a little bit of a side relief there. We got one port, two ports on top. One port kind of wraps around, one port is right here on the front, it's very tiny. I wanted to give you kind of a, a first person perspective on how it looks and how skinny it is. Now it's not so much super short, he actually put my little logo on there, that was really nice of him. I really like this comp because they don't force you to choose which gun that you're going to be putting it on. So you know, after the Texas Black Rifle uh, compensator wasn't really available, you know, I was really digging this Agency Arms comp. Now I've already done a video on it, but the one thing I could not stand about what they did was they forced you to either use it on a Gen 3 or a Gen 4 only. And that really bugged me that like I couldn't even interchange it on different Glocks, more, you know, not even to mention if I wanted to put it on other guns. So that was kind of a con. You can buy this as a compensator only and you get your choice of single color Cerakote or you can get it with this barrel. This is their spiral fluted barrel. It comes in stainless and titanium nitride. This one is the logo-less version. I like that. Um, it kind of matches the theme of this sleeper build. So we're gonna move the Glock 17, AKA Polymer 80 Long out of the way. We'll talk about that one a little bit more here in a little bit, right here. And this is how I was running it when we were at the range. Fits really, really nicely, nicely. Plenty of clearance for the guide rod and it fits right up on there. Get a good look at it. Fits super snug against the slide. Just right, in my opinion, there's a side profile of it. Um, have it. If you twist it just a little bit harder, it will go on there. It's not 100% super flush, but it is really, really close. And this is the Glock 43 that we're gonna be doing a build on very soon. I do have coupon codes and links for the Shield Irons Mag Extension and Slide, if that's something you're interested in. And now here you can see it from the top, you can see it's the perfect width for the Glock 43. Let's move on to a different gun. That's what it looks like on here. Um, it would probably go, nope, that's as tight as it gets right here on the Gen 5s. So keep that in mind if that's something that you were looking at. So that's what it looks like on the Polymer 80 Glock 26. If you are interested in seeing this build uh, in more depth, including the light and everything, I'll put a playlist below. But that's as flush as I can get it. It will probably turn one more time if we're lucky, but you're gonna need a set of pliers to turn it with this barrel because of the tight tolerances. But I believe I have a coupon code for these guys if you are interested in Blacklist Industries. I mean, I've had nothing but great experiences with their stuff. Another thing that I look at when I'm look testing compensators is I look at the inside of this right in here and I look for any scratch marks. I do know a guy which we'll make a video about him very soon, where the top of this front portion here on a different manufacturer for a different brand comp, it blew up because this front hole was just off center just a little bit. When it blew up, he said he noticed a ton of scratches on the very 
front of it and this one is faring really well so that's something i wanted to make sure of as well let's see what it looks like here on the po7 and that's what it looks like and i do have a comp that's made for this from primary machine but hey this is another option if you don't feel like spending uh, more money than you need to now that's about as flush as it's fitting on here i might be able to get another turn out of it let me try no that's as far as it goes so that's what it looks like on the CZ. Then let's jump up top real quick. Let's talk about a couple other concerns that I might have and my final impressions of this compensator. Back up top. So that is the Legion Precision Compensator. Now you can buy this in a couple of different flavors. Number one, you can get it with or without the barrel. This is their fluted barrel. They are available in stainless steel as well as titanium nitride, and there are no logos on it. I believe you can get them with logos, but mine doesn't have any. You get your choice of Cerakote on the compensator of single color Cerakote. That is included in the price. We will be doing a follow-up video, and in that follow-up video, we're gonna go through all these same guns, and we're gonna use hotter ammo and see how that compares as well. And then in that video as well, we'll also include the CZ P07, and we will have a completely OEM Glock 17 at that point in time as well, just to make sure that this one wasn't a fluke. Pros and cons. Pros. This thing is really, really affordable for compensators. Aside from the Glock 17 P80 that we had, every single gun cycled 100% of the time with 115 grain, 124 grain, and 147 grain standard ammo. Every single one of them locked open on the last round. There was a few instances where I accidentally was holding down the slide release. In those cases, I reloaded about five or six rounds, shot them through, making sure I didn't hang on to that slide lock slide release, and they locked open. The next thing is all of these guns are using OEM guide rod springs. None of them have aftermarket spring rates in them. So that is definitely a plus. If I have to be nitpicky about the cons, it's not gonna be flush with the width of your slide unless you put it on a Glock 43. That's gonna be the only con that I can find about it as of yet. Um, like I said, we will be testing this further with hotter ammo, but I would love to hear your guys' feedback about this. What do you think about this compensator right now? Do you think this is gonna be a suitable replacement for the Texas Black Rifle Company um, compensators? Because those guys are nowhere to be found right now. But until next time, guys, you guys stay sexy and I love you.